Hello, this is Steven again, and in this video I'm going to show you how to animate a pendulum that swings back and forth, which will look uh, somewhat like this when we're finished. I'm going to break this video into two parts, and in the first part I'm just going to show the movement of the pendulum itself and not move the little base that it's connected to to illustrate a couple principles of animation, and then in the second video I'll add more life to it which includes moving the pendulum base and getting it to uh, work with that movement, right? So uh, it'll look similar to this. I'm gonna have it start where it is just uh, facing up and down and then have it swing back and forth. That's gonna lead us to the second video where uh, I'll actually move the, the top part, this base at the top that will cause the pendulum to swing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a new scene and I have referenced this pendulum into the scene. So I'm going to make sure if you see that that's my Z axis, that's my X axis, I'm going to have it swing in the X axis just so just so you have a point of reference for that. So I have a new scene, I'm going to right click over here in the outliner, I'm going to go to reference and create reference. And to show you this, I have already set up a project for this, I don't need to click set project, I've already set that project and created a new project. I have put this rig file in my scenes directory and I have that one scene that I was showing already saved. So I'm going to be referencing, I'm adding a reference into my scene, I'm selecting that pendulum rig and referencing that in. And this is the referenced rig that I'll be animating on. So if you want, I can leave it right where it's at, it's sort of centered on the grid or I can, you know, press W on this and move it up a little bit if I want to have it you know, sort of above the grid so I can set it up that way. I don't need to animate this yet, but I'll probably want to just set one key right where it's at so I know that if I move it, it's going to come right back to that spot, right? But I'm going to focus on the three rings that are below here. And one of the easiest ways for me to do this, I can just go ahead and select each one in unison. You know, select the top one, shift select the second one, then shift select the last one and make sure on frame one I set a key. So I'm just going to press S on the keyboard. And then I'm going to go down a few frames. Let's go say to frame 20. And I'm going to rotate these rings so that they're going back like this. Right? And you can see in the rotation they're all going to be the same. I've rotated it the same amount. So if I select each one of these you're going to see it rotated the same amount. So I did this on purpose so I could select each ring, you know, shift select each ring so I can move them all at once, right? And I did that by pressing E on the keyboard for rotate and then rotated it. And now I'm going to press S on the keyboard. So I moved it forward on frame 20, rotated all of them, pressed S on the keyboard. Now I'm going to go to the other side. So if one of my swings, if my first swing is 20 and I'll change the timing when I get to the second video, when I talk about how it's going to lose momentum, here I'm just going to have it swing back and forth. So if in 20 frames it swings one way, 40 frames would be back to the center. I don't need to key that, but then I'm going to go to frame 60 and I'm going to swing it back, right? And I'll probably end up changing the timing. And just to kind of bring this up, I'll probably, I'm, I'm going to try to get it around the same thing. If I want to, I could just type in say 35 and key, right? And if I have just that rotate Z selected, and I press S on the keyboard, it's only going to key the rotate Z. If nothing is selected, if you haven't already realized this, if nothing is selected in this channel box, and I have set the appropriate settings in the preferences, so I'm going to go here, and if I go to time slider, you can see where it says sync timeline display and sync selection and graph editor. The sync timeline display is what handles this. If this is on and I select one of the, the channels, when I press S on the keyboard it's just going to key that channel. If I select them all, they're all going to be keyed. If none of them are selected, if I just sort of select off of it and reselect them, then nothing is selected and I'll be able to key all of them. Right. So then I'm going to go down to, so that was 60, I go 20 more, that would be center, and 20 more would be on the other side. And again, I could just type in negative 35. And then if I just select that, press S on the keyboard, that just keyed that one. 
So here I have the pendulum swinging up, swinging to the other side, swinging back to the other side. So I'm going to change the timing of this a little bit, and I'm going to show you a trick to do this. I'm just going to double click in the timeline, going to select this entire range that's set by this range slider. So I can just go down to the end. If you don't see it, it's a little out of range. So if I bring this down a little bit, you'll see a little arrow there. But I'm just going to click the very end of this red area, the selection area, and I'm going to drag it back to the left. And what that's doing is it's retiming keyframes that are closer to one another are going to happen faster, right? So if I move this closer to frame one, so this keyframe closer to frame one, the action that happens from here to here is going to be faster. If I move it the other way, it's going to slow down the action from here to here. So if it takes 20 frames for this to happen and I move this down, it's going to take less than 20 frames. So it's going to happen faster. So I want to accommodate, I'm going to bring this to about 85 and you can right click and you can actually click snap to make sure that they're right on the keyframes that we need. But I have snapping turned on by default in the graph editor, right? So I have now added a little less time for it to hit this keyframe. It was hitting it at 100. Now it's hitting at 85. So the action is going to be faster. The speed of this is going to be faster, right? Doesn't have a lot of life to it, but we're gonna add more to this. But I'm gonna go here, and if I middle mouse and drag, because this one is on this side, I can just middle mouse and drag this over here, and I'm gonna select rotate Z and press S on the keyboard. And I'm choosing Z because again, the object Z is going straight away from me, right? And that's the axis that this is rotating it on, right? So Z is going this way. So things that are rotating around that Z, that's what I'm keying for this. So if you're working with another rig or a different object and you're rotating it around the Z, realize it's on the object Z on that particular curve is what I've got selected and it's rotating it on the Z axis for that object, right? So. I'm going to look at this. I'm winding up with about 18 frames and uh, I want to make the timing a little bit different. So I can shift, hold down shift and drag across these frames because I added this one, but I want to just change these and I'm going to bring this down. So this is hitting at about 15, All right? So there's where it's in the center, 15 frames later, it's on one side. And so 15 frames later, it should be on the next side. But since I scaled this, since I scaled the keyframes, it changed the timing for everything, right? So when I look at this, that's at frame 15. This is at frame 42. So really, I would want this at frame 30 to give the same timing. So I've got 15 frames where it goes up. And then 30 would actually be in the center. So what I want to do is add 15 more frames. So I'm going to take that to 40 and then 45 is where I want that. So in 15 frames, it goes from center to here. I don't need another one in the center, otherwise it would be at frame 30. Then 45 is gonna be the other side. And then back to the very beginning would be 30 frames. So at 45, I would then wanna set this one. So I hold down shift and click that frame and I'm gonna move it forward. Right, so it's at 30. So that's 10, 20, 30, right? And then the next one is gonna be 30 more frames. So 10, 20, 30. So I'm gonna shift, click, drag that here. And then I'm gonna put this key right down at the end. So I middle mouse and drag all the way to 120, let's say, press S on the keyboard. And again, I'm gonna have to time this out because I want this to end at 120. If I wanted to add more, I could. And then that way I could make sure that my last one winds up at frame 15, 15 after that, right? So I'd want to make that next frame 30 frames after here. So it would be 135. So I can hold down shift, click, and then I can drag this to 135. Now you can play around with the timing. I'm just setting it up almost like a metronome where it just swings back and forth, right? And now it's going to always, when it loops like that, it's always going to come back to the center. So since I set this one as my very beginning, what I could do is bring all these down 
right? And set this, if I wanted this to be my starting point, I can set that to frame 15, right? So if I wanted it to loop. Eventually what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna have it slowly diminish in speed and slowly stop. So I don't necessarily at this point in time need it to just loop back and forth. So I'm gonna start that from the very center, right? And I just realize when I look at my animation, it's gonna start at the center, it's gonna move up. And this movement up is going to actually be starting at the pendulum base, this base at the top. But for now, I'm just getting the motion going. So I've got one at frame one, one at frame 15, and I actually have another extraneous frame here because one of these keys. So I'm just gonna move that down over here. So hold down shift, click, and move it down to frame 15. So it was one of these that just didn't get grabbed when I was moving everything. All right, so now I have up to 135, and then it's just gonna stop right there. So I'm gonna bring this back to 135, so that's my final key. And I've just really just set up the very basics of that motion for the pendulum moving back and forth. Right. So I'm now going to do some offset to give this a little bit more life because this doesn't necessarily feel like if you look at this, the idea here is that this is not gonna be moving up at the same rate as these. It's gonna be falling behind a little bit. So it's called drag or the wave principle, right? So if it gets up to this point, this, this curve, this curve, and this curve have got up, up there all together. And I want this one to be falling behind this one and this one to be falling behind this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Windows, I'm gonna go to Animation Editors and Graph Editor. And in the Graph Editor, you're gonna notice that it looks like there's one curve doing everything. But I wanna break this down in that that's one rotate Z, that's another rotate Z, and that's another rotate Z. So each one of these are just stacked on top of one another because they're the same point. So what I'm gonna do is I need to figure out which one is which, right? So I have a control one, a control two, a control three. So control one is the top one. So that one's gonna be leading all the motion. This second one is control two, the last one is control three. So I'm gonna select them all, right? I'm gonna select the rotate Z of control two, and I'm gonna move this just a little bit so I can kind of work on this. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it over a couple frames. So one, two, three, four, all right? And then I'm gonna take this one, which is control three, the base one or the one at the bottom, and then I'm gonna hold shift and I am middle mouse and dragging over, right? So the previous one I did one, two, one, two, three, four, that's five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna bring it back one and then I'm gonna shift select all of these or since I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna command select all of these so I can see them all stacked up. And now you see they're offset. So I have an offset where they're equally distant apart, right? So when I move this animation, I'm gonna move this out of the way slightly and play this, now it feels like it's got a little bit of a swing to each one, right? As it travels down the chain. The more I offset them, so I could select this whole curve and I don't wanna move that first one. I wanna leave the first one where it's at because I want them all to start at the same point. So now I'm gonna move this, let's say two more over, and I move this one. This is why I'm selecting all the keyframes here and not that one. And I'm gonna move this one, two, right? So now I've offset it a little bit more. And I, again, I can select each one, hold down Command or Control if you're on a PC, and I'll move this out of the way again and press play. And now you can see there's a little bit more. So it, it feels like it's got a lot more weight to it, right? If I add more, you're gonna see even more weight. So just like experimenting with this so you can see the amount of weight that each offset is adding, right? Move this away. And now it looks like it's got a lot more weight to it, right? So that's how you can add a little bit more weight, more offset makes it feel like it's got more weight to it, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, 
each three of these. Oh, one of them's not offset as more than the other ones. So you can see right there, I'm gonna move this over there. Now it looks like it's an equal distance. And I, I can hold down K on the keyboard and scrub it back and forth and you can see how much weight it's got or how much weight it feels like it has or I could scrub here, right? Or just play it through. So now it feels a lot more weightier, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of emphasis on each one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these keys and I'm gonna move them up. So this is value, going up and down is value. So the very first one, I don't wanna change. The second one, I'm going to change it so that this key and this key go further. So I'm gonna again hold down shift and middle mouse, but I'm dragging down. Same thing here, I'm gonna drag it up. I'm just going away from the previous key because I'm gonna add a little bit more emphasis to each one, so I'm gonna grab this one too, right? And I can bring it down so that they're about the same. Right now, I'm just kind of having it swing back and forth, like I said, rather than, you know, at the final one, I'm going to be making this go slower, right? But in this first video, I'm just talking about going back and forth, right? So then I'm gonna grab this one as well. Whoop. Uh, pull up everything anyway, get this key, bring it down further, grab this key, bring it up further, grab this key. This is on that last ring and what it's doing is it's adding emphasis to that, right? Oh, and I didn't grab this one before so I need to bring that one up and I need to grab that one and bring it up, right? And then bring this one down Right, so the lowest one is gonna be the top one. It doesn't need to swing as much. And the second one's gonna be swinging more because of the energy that's generated from the first one. And then the last one is gonna be gaining more speed because of, the, of its position down the chain, right? So these look like they might be a little off, but I think that this will kind of work out. So now I'll play that through. And now you can see that it's got a lot more swing in it loops it up a little bit more and gives it a little bit of a whipping action or a wave action to the, the last two segments down the chain on this pendulum. So that's what we're gonna do for this first video. And then the second video, like I said, I'm going to move the upper platform and then have it lose momentum as it slows down. The platform's gonna move just to kind of get the pendulum to swing. But this is where I start from and to get this pendulum swinging, this multi-section pendulum swinging and make it look like it's got a little more life. It functions somewhat like a swing arm or a tail wag on a dog, if you're uh, ever looking at those kind of principles. So hopefully this helps and uh, hopefully in the next video, you'll be able to follow along and get the idea of it just kind of moving naturally with this uh, pendulum base.